Hello everyone, welcome back to Paperbacks and Ponytails. I'm Katie, and today, if you can see by the title, I'm going to be talking about the 22 books that I want to read in 2022. So before we get started, I wanted to share with you my mug for today. It's an Ursula tentacle mug. I got this at, I think, TJ Maxx. So check out stores like that and Home Goods. Sometimes they'll have Disney mugs. So that's where I get most of my Disney mugs from. So today I'm drinking some, like, it's called Alice in Wonderland tea, and it's so good. It is black tea, so it has more caffeine. I don't drink too much of it, but I kind of just wanted something warm today. So let's go ahead and talk about the books. I have a huge pile next to me, actually two piles. Um, but we're going to talk about all the fun books I have. And I think I'm going to share, like, okay. So these two I've been wanting to read since I bought them. Just never got around to getting to them, but I am so, so excited for these. And I hope there's not another book out because, like, I'm going to have to buy that one, too. <laughs> but it is the, so far, duology, Mountain Laurel and Shiloh by Lori Benton. And these books are absolutely stunning and gorgeous. I love these covers. But they just sound so good. Like, I didn't even need to look at reviews because like I knew I was probably gonna love these so these are the first two books on my 22 books for the year and I'll just read a little bit of the back it says North Carolina 1793 Ian Cameron a Boston cabinet maker turned frontier trapper has come to Mountain Laurel hoping to remake himself yet again into his planter uncle's heir no matter how uneasily the role of slave owner rests upon his shoulders then he meets Siona Beautiful, artistic, and enslaved to his skin, to his kin. Siona has a secret. She's been drawing for years. Ever since that day, she picked up a broken slate to sketch. Oh, excuse me, <clears throat> to sketch a portrait. So, when Ian catches her at it, he offers her the opportunity to let her talent flourish, still secretly in his cabinet making shop. So, it sounds really good. I really do enjoy kind of like um, historical fiction. Um, it is, these are both Christian fiction. I actually have quite a few of these on my list. Well, actually, probably half and half, I would say. But I am very excited for both of these. I'm not going to read the blurb for the second one because I don't want to spoil myself either. Okay, so the next book that I got is, also very excited for it, Tacos for Two by Bet Betsy St. Amant. It could be Amant, um, if it's French. <laughs> but I love this cover. That is so pretty. That'd probably be one of my favorite covers for next year. Like, I love this cover so much. It's so pretty. But it just sounds like a really, really sweet, clean, cute romance. It says, food truck owner Rory Perez may not be able to cook, but she's determined to keep the family business out of the red. An upcoming contest during, her food, during a food truck festival seems like the best way to do it. The prize money could finally give her solid financial footing freeing up her time to meet the man she's been talking to via an anonymous online dating site. So, I just, this was definitely a cover buy. <laughs> like, that cover is gorgeous. I absolutely love that cover. Okay, so the next book that I'm going to be reading is Pull Me Under by Kelly Luce, or Luce. And this is the book of the month, month copy, but I think I got this one... I think I got this at um, a library sale. It wasn't like a book sale. They just have like a wall of books that they usually have for sale. And so this one is here and I think I got it for, I think $2, I think. But um, definitely a cover buy again. Like this kind of reminded me of Phantom of the Opera a little bit, but I know it's not. <laughs> but it says, uh, Chisuru Akitani is a 12 year old daughter of the famous violinist and Japanese living national treasure, Hiro Ak, Ak wow, Akitani. Overweight and hafu, her mother is white. She is tormented by her classmates and targeted by the most relentless bully of them all, Tomoya, Tomoya Yu. When Chitsuru's mother dies suddenly, her father offers her no comfort and she is left feeling alone and unmoored. At school, her bu bully's cruelty intensifies, and in a moment of blind rage, Chitsuru grabs a Marimoto letter opener from her teacher's desk and fatally stabs Tomoyo, Tomoyo, wow, Tomoya Yu in the neck. So it talks about her struggle after doing that and her relationship with her and her father. And it just sounds really good. I was very excited to find that one for only $2. 
And the next book that I have on that list is Dark Roads by Chevy, or Chevy? Maybe Chevy Stevens. Um, I got this as an ARC last year, probably in uh, July, since it came out in August. And I won this on Goodreads, but I never got around to it. I'm kind of sad that I didn't because I heard that this book is supposed to be really good. Like, I've heard some pretty good reviews on it. So, but this is Never Walk Alone on it. For decades, people have been warned about the mysterious disappearances along the Cold Creek Highway. When Haley McBride decides to run away from an unbearable living situation, she thinks that her survival skills will save her, and she counts on people thinking that she was the victim of the killer. So, sounds good. Definitely crime involved. I don't know if I'm going to like this or not. Um, thrillers are kind of hit or miss sometimes for me, but I'm hoping to really enjoy this one. Okay, the next one that I have is... I'm going to drink some tea first. I'm so glad I put honey in it. I'm trying to stay away from sugar, so I'm trying to go a little bit more natural. Okay, so the next book that I have to read is The Zookeeper's Wife by Diane Ackerman. And I have watched the movie, I think, twice so far, and I absolutely love the movie. So I've been really wanting to read this book. Um, this is the movie edition cover, which I actually kind of like better than the original one, just because it's got, like, the, the cute baby lion on it. But... It's really, really good. It's about a wife and husband who own a zoo in Poland and during World War World War One or World War Two. I think it's World War Two. Um, but their zoo kinda gets taken over by the Germans and their animals are made in for for food for the Germans. But they end up taking in Jews and they smuggle them into free land. So it's really, really good. I'm excited to actually read this book. It is actually um, nonfiction, which I'm excited because I don't normally get excited about nonfiction. But, oh, I didn't know there's pictures. <laughs> Very exciting. So, yeah, so that's what that is. And I'm excited because I like, I like animals, although I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be sad. <laughs> but, yeah, so that is that one. And then the next one that I have, I've had this book for probably like 10 years. Still haven't read it. Uh, the Lost Wife by Allison Richman. And I guess I've just been kind of, I don't know. I normally like historical fiction, at least lately. In the past, though, I haven't really been a huge fan of historical fi fiction. So that's probably why I never got around to it. But I'm excited to read it this year and give it a try. It says, During the last moments of calm in pre-war Prague, Lenka, a young art student and Joseph, who is studying medicine, fall in love. With the promise of a better future, they marry, only to have their dreams shattered by the imminent Nazi invasion. Like so many others, they are torn apart by the currents of war. So I'm excited to read. I actually have quite a, a couple of historical fiction on my list. Okay, next book I have is a contemporary romance. So it is Geekerella by Ashley Poston and... Everyone seems to really like this book. I probably haven't been reading it because I'm worried I'm going to be like one of the only ones that is not going to like it. Um, I'm not sure, but I'll give it a try. You never know. Um, and the cover is really cute. And again, I think I got this for like a dollar at a library book sale. And it's a nice hardcover edition too. But this one says, When geek girl L. Whit Whitmer sees a cosplay contest sponsored by the producers of Starfield, she has to enter. First prize is an invitation to the Excelsicon cosplay ball and a meet and greet with the actor slated to play Federation Prince Carmendor in the reboot. Elle's been scraping together tips from her gig at the Magic Pumpkin food truck behind her stepmother's back, and winning the contest could be her ticket out once and for all, not to mention a fan girl's dream come true. Cute. So, contemporary romance. I'm excited to... I have a wide variety of books here that I... I think we're good with all genres, pretty much. Okay, and then I have two sci-fi books. Um, I don't have the first one with me. It is going to be coming in the mail, like, the beginning of next year. Someone else is reading it, and then they're going to send it to me. Um, but I'm going to be reading... For some reason, I forgot the first book, and I talk about it all the time. Oh, yeah, uh, Dark Matter and the sequel, Recursion, by Blake Crouch. And I've heard so many good things about Dark Matter and recursion and so 
I'm very excited to read these. I don't know really what it's about. I know it's sci-fi. I know it has to do with time travel, which I do love a really good time travel story. So does my dad, actually. He might like these books. I might give them to him to read next if I enjoy them. But I won't read too much about this one because this is the second book. But I do know that um, a lot of people who don't normally like sci-fi actually end up really enjoying these books. So I'm excited to see what all the hype is about for those two. So those count for two books in 2022. Since I do own the second one, just I don't own it yet. <laughs> and these are all books that I own too. I was going to make a separate list for, for 22 library books, but... Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in in the comments down below. And maybe I'll do a separate list for books that I want to get out from the library. Okay, so the next one that I want to get, I got this one for a dollar. Yes, I'm, I'm the cheap person who buys everything for cheap. Honestly, the only books that I have bought in brand new, well not brand new, but like full price, was probably Shiloh, the sequel to Mountain Laurel. Probably, possibly Mountain Laurel too, but I had a gift card, so... That's probably the only time that I buy books full price. Okay, so the next book is Caroline by uh, Caroline Little House Revisited. So this is a kind of, not necessarily, it's not a sequel. It's kind of like, I think more of a prequel to the Little House books. It's by Sarah Miller, and I believe she actually got permission from the Historical Society for, um, for Laura Ingalls Wilder and... So I'm excited. So this is all about Caroline and their struggles traveling into the West with Charles and her daughters, Mary, Laura, and Carrie. So this is in the frigid days of February 1870, Caroline Ingalls and her family leave the familiar comforts of the big woods of Wisconsin and the warm bosom of her family for a new life in Kansas's, Kansas's Indian Territory. Packing what they can carry in their wagon, Caroline, her husband Charles, and their little girls, Mary and Laurel, Laura, I guess Carrie's not introduced in this book yet. Head west to settle in a beautiful, unpredictable land full of promise and peril. So, ooh, I just realized there's a map in here. I have a couple challenges next year that need a map. If you need a map for a challenge, <laughs> there's one. There you go. I'm going to actually use this one now that I know that there's a map in it. Oh, I have to keep this one separate. Okay, super excited. We are about halfway through. We have a few more. So the next book that I have um, was gifted to me this past year and I really want to get to it. It's called Tell Her No Lies by Kelly Irvin and this is a Christian fiction book. I am very excited to read this. It is a standalone. It's not part of a series so I'm always excited to find a standalone where I don't have to worry about finding more series but I believe this book came from yeah, my friend Terry. So thank you Terry. I don't think she watches my videos but if she does then hi. <laughs> um, but yeah so this one says Nina Fisher carries a camera wherever she goes so she can view life through a filter, safely. After her mother abandoned her to the streets, Nina has kept people at a distance, including her uncle, who adopted Nina and her sister. Wealthy and proud, he is a good man, a fair judge, and someone many in San Antonio admire. So, But when he is murdered and the detective assigned to the case accuses Nina of the crime, she knows she must act. So, Very exciting. I love a good crime and a good... Um, mystery. So I think this is going to be really, really fun. And look at those colors. Pink and purple. That's pretty. All right. So next book is, let's see here, is a, I actually have quite a few books that were gifted to me from this past year because I really want to prioritize those this year. This one was from Catherine. She sent me um, Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. And it's one of my family's favorite movies. My dad absolutely loves this movie. I actually probably should watch it. We haven't watched it in a while. But um, I finally decided to pick up the book. This has been on my wish list and somebody sent it to me. It's really short. It's a middle grade. And if it's as good as the movie, this will probably be an all-time favorite. So it says, Is eternal life a blessing or a curse? That is what young Winnie Foster must decide when she discovers a spring on her family's property whose waters grant immortality. Members of the Tuck family, having drunk from the spring, tell Winnie of their experiences watching life go by and never growing older. So it's kind of like a fantasy type, like magical realism. It, it, it is a really good movie if you've never seen it, and I'm excited to read the book. All right, next up is a book that, again, was probably a cover by, but it also sounded really good. And this 
was gifted as well from from Katie, another Katie. <laughs> I love finding other Katie's. So this is The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. And I actually got two copies of this by accident when I was gifted. So, But I kept one copy and then I bought myself something else from the other person. So this, I love this cover. It is so, so pretty. And so I have not gotten around to this yet. I've been wanting to for the longest time and I'm glad I'm finally going to be reading it. It says, A Forgotten History, A Secret Network of Women, A Legacy of Poison and Revenge, Welcome to the Lost Apothecary. Hidden in the depths of 18th century London, a secret apothecary shop caters to an unusual kind of clientele. Women across the city whisper of a mysterious figure named Noah, who sells well-disguised poisons to use against the oppressive men in their lives. So, I'm excited. I believe this is dual timeline as well. Sorry, I just got to move my foot. It is falling asleep. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so yeah, so it's dual timeline. I'm very excited to be reading this. I think it's kind of um, a little bit of a mystery, a little bit of fun poison, I guess. <laughs> so that is the next book. And the next book that I have is, oh, I'm so excited for this book. I don't know why I just didn't read it when I got it. Probably because I was finishing up a few challenges for the year. But this is Unspoken by Angela Hunt. And gorillas are one of my absolute favorite animals of all time. I absolutely love them. And so I had to buy it just basically because of that. And yeah. So it says, Glee Granger has spent the last eight years of her life entirely focused on Seema. A gorilla of the scientist has been teaching sign language. Though Seema isn't the first gorilla to use sign language, Glee has pushed their interaction to, bre to break through levels. Technically, however, Seema belongs to the zoo where she was born, and the zoo wants its gorilla back. So, pretty sure that she wants to keep the gorilla. This is another uh, Christian fiction, but I think this one might be self-published. Possibly. Or maybe it's like, let's see. Yes, it is. It is self-published. So, if you need a self-published book for a challenge, this would work. And I'm very excited because I, I love sign language. I've been trying to... Um, refresh my mind a little bit because I took it in college and it was a lot of fun. So I've been trying to remember a little bit. So I think this will be a fun read. All right. And then the next book that I have is, which I started this year, but never got around to finishing. And that is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I know so many people love his books. I haven't even read any and I, I think I own like four now. So I need to get going and read at least one. So this is the one I've chosen for this year. Um, I don't think I have any more on my list for next year, although you never know. Um, I got this one, though, when Book of the Month was having a $5 sale, so I picked this one up. And I'm excited to finally dive into it. Um, it says, looking at real estate isn't usually a life or death situation, but an apartment open house becomes just that when a failed bank robber bursts in and takes a group of strangers hostage. The captives include a recently retired couple who relentlessly hunt down fixer-uppers to avoid the painful truth that they can't fix up their own marriage. There's a wealthy banker who has been too busy making money to care about anyone else, and a young couple who are about to have their first child but can't seem to agree on anything, from where they want to live to how they met in the first place. Add to the mix an 80-year-old woman who has lived long enough not to be afraid of someone waving a gun in her face, a flustered but still ready-to-make-a-deal real estate agent, and a mystery man who has locked himself in the apartment's only bathroom and even got the worst group of hostages in the world. So, I've heard really good things about this. I know some people weren't too much of a fan, but I'm excited to, to give it a go. So that is that one. I just have a couple more to talk about now. And then the next book that I'm going to read was another gift. I think a couple more of these were gifts. <laughs> okay, so this one, I believe... See, this one was from mm -hmm. Susan. So Susan sent this to me, and it's When Stars Rain Down by Angela Jackson Brown. And this cover is really pretty. And I love learning about um, African American history, and I feel like this one is going to be a good one. Um, it is Christian fiction as well, actually. So I'm excited to, to read this one. It says, The summer of 1936 in Parsons, Georgia, is unseasonably hot, and Opal Pruitt senses a nameless storm brewing. She hopes this foreboding feeling won't overshadow her upcoming 18th birthday or the annual Founders Day celebration in just a few weeks. 
She and her grandma Bertie work as housekeepers for the white widow Miss Peggy, and Opal desperately wants some time to be young and carefree with her cousins and friends. But when the Ku Klux Klan descends on Opal's neighborhood, the tight knit community, community is shaken in every way possible. So I'm excited. Um, I don't really know too much about the Ku Klux Klan, but I'm sure it is <laughs> quite brutal. So might be a bit of a tearjerker in that one. I can hear my mom talking downstairs. He won't be able to, but I heard her. Okay. The next book that I have is, let's see, is Dial A for Aunties. And this particular copy was kindly sent to me. Actually, I think I have to put back the receipt in it. No, I didn't put it in, but I will put it back in. Is Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto. And this is actually going to end up being a series. Um, a second book is coming out next year. I'm very, very excited to see what goes on. I think it's called like four... Four aunties in a wedding or something. I will try to put it up here on the screen for you. But um, funny story is um, I won like a most valuable member in a Facebook group that I'm in. And so a couple people kindly sent me a copy of this book by accident. I think I got four copies of this book. I thought I thought it was hilarious. And um, I probably will, will remember that for the rest of my life. But it says... When Madeline Sean ends up accidentally killing her blind date, her meddlesome mother calls for her even more meddlesome aunties to help get rid of the body. Unfortunately, a dead body proves to be a lot more challenging to dispose of than one, not, than one might anticipate, especially when it is inadvertently shipped in a cake cooler to the over-the-top billionaire wedding that Medi, her mom, and her aunties are working at an island resort on the California coastline. So, it sounds funny. I'm I mean, it's got to be funny when stuff like that happens. I mean, I have some pretty funny aunts. I mean, I'm sure they wouldn't help me move a body. <laughs> but but I'm sure some of those aunties will probably remind me of my mom and her sisters. Okay, next up is... Um, I'm so excited to start reading this author's writing. Um, one of my favorite YouTubers, um, Chantel Reads All Day. She has read, I think, almost all of her books. And this is Formula of Deception by Carrie Stewart Parks. I know this is one of her favorite. I think this is one of her favorite writers now, probably. But this is a standalone. It's not one of her, one of her series. So I decided to pick up um, one book that I could read right away without, without having to buy or go to the library for the rest of the series. So it says... Um, an artist hiding from an escaped killer uncovers one of World War II's most dangerous secrets, a secret that desperate men will do anything to keep hidden. So I'm just going to read that little blurb and just leave it at that because I don't want any spoilers for myself either for this one. So I'm excited for that one. All right, next up is another book that I probably should have gotten to last year. I don't think anyone gifted this to me. I, I think I made this one in a book trade. So it is The Island of Sea Woman by Lisa C. And again, I love that cover. It's my favorite color, aqua or blue. Teal? Teal. <laughs> it's blue. Um, but I'm very excited about this book. This book is set on the island of Jeju, which I believe is... Yeah, it's off the island of Japan. And it says, um, The Island of Sea Woman follows Mija and Young Suk. Two girls from very different backgrounds. As they begin working in the sea with their village's all-female diving collective, over many decades, through the Japanese colonialism of the 1930s and 1940s, World War II, the Korean War, and the era of cell phones and wetsuits for the women divers, Mija and Young Suk develop the closest of bonds. But after hundreds of dives and years of friendship, forces outside their control push their relationship to the breaking point. So I'm excited. Um... Definitely more of like a contemporary historical fiction, but I'm very excited to read this. I thought it sounded really good, and it's about a place that I've never heard of before, so I'm very excited. All right, next up is one more Christian fiction. Wait, is this one on here? Yeah, sorry, I got confused because I brought another book up for another video, but this one is on the list, and this is Jewel of the Nile by Tessa Afshar. Again, I really wanted to read this book when I got it, and never did. So bad at that. <laughs> but this is a biblical um, era fiction book, um, and this says, 
uh, raised as an orphan by her aunt, Charlene has only been told a few pieces of her parents' tragic love story. Her beautiful dark skin is proof that her father was Kushite, but she knows nothing else. While visiting her grandfather, Char Charlene overhears that her father is still alive, and discovering his identity becomes her obsession. Both her grandfather and the queen forbid her quest, forbid her request. However, so when her only clues lead to Rome, Charlene sneaks onto the ship of a merchant trusted by friends. So it sounds really, really good. I think I'm really going to enjoy this book. I actually own, I think, three of her books now. I haven't tried one yet, but I know I'm going to, I'm going to probably love, wait, did I say Tusca Lee? Tessa Afshar. If I said Tusca Lee, it's probably because I saw her name in this little bird, but it is Tessa Afshar. Forgive my brain if I said that. But yeah, I'm really excited to finally read one of her books. All right, and the last book that I have on this list is a very popular book that I've never gotten around to, probably because I wasn't into historical fiction a few years ago. But it is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, and um, this cover is really pretty. I got this from Book of the Month. Um, I believe I got this with a referral link, and I'm just really, really excited. So... If you want to check out Book of the Month, I will leave my referral link down below, so go check it out. And But I'm really excited to, to try this book out. So I know it is pretty, um, pretty, um, what are, what's it called? Emotional. That's what I was going to say, emotional. Actually, wait, I think I might have gotten this from somebody. Oh, no, I got her other book from somebody. Yeah, I did get this book from Book of the Month. Although I... I bumped the cover somewhere. Okay, so it says, In the quiet village of Caravo, Vienne, Maurice says goodbye to her husband, Ant Antoine, as he heads for the front. She doesn't believe that the Nazis will invade France, but invade they do, in droves of marching soldiers, in caravans of trucks and tanks, in planes that fill the skies and drop bombs upon the innocent. When a German captain requisitions Vien Vienne's home, she and her daughter must live with the enemy or lose everything. So... I'm excited. It's also about her daughter, Isabel, and her fight with the resistance. So I'm excited. Very, very excited to read this book. So that was the last book that I have to share with you. So that is 20, 22 books in 2022. My first time ever doing something like that. And I honestly think I will be getting to all of these books. Um, Some of these books are on some of my reading challenges for the year. Um, some aren't, so I'll have a wide variety. And um, if you made it this far, I have a new video coming out on Wednesday, and it will be a 2022 challenge. I'm so, so excited to be doing this. Um, it will have 12 prompts, one for each month of next year. I will share a couple of book examples with you for each challenge or each prompt. And so I hope you will join in. As well as I also have um, a book group on Facebook, which I share the, I made a cute little graphic for the challenge and stuff. So you, if you want to join in, I will leave the Facebook group down in the description box below. So thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video and I hope you all have a wonderful day.